cube. And let's change some of the values here. So under the coordinates, or actually under the object size, uh, let's go ahead and increase the size in the Y to maybe about 320 or so. The size in the Z, let's take that down to 120 or so. Let's add a fillet, and we'll decrease the size of the fillet radius down to something like 8. And we can decrease the size, or, or, sorry, the uh, fillet subdivisions to 3. Let's add a number of divisions along the Y because we're going to be deforming this object. And so let's add maybe three, 30 segments in the Y. And I want the pivot to be at the base. Right now we can't really move that pivot. So what we can do is convert this, make this object editable. And let's now move this up to the base of the, back up to the uh, grid. Let's move the pivot down to the base of this object. And now if we were to go ahead and scale it, it would scale from the base. So here we've got a nice base object that we can clone. All right, so let's add now a cloner object to our hierarchy. We'll drop the cube into the cloner object. And right now the clone, there are being three clones created. If we take a look at the object properties here in the attributes manager. And the clones are being moved 50 centimeters in the Y. So we want to change that. We want to create a nice long bar so that we can see what's happening. So let's change this to be zero in the Y. And let's add a specific amount in the X. Basically, we'll just move this until they're right next to one another. Let's change the count to 30. So we have 30 identical blocks that we can use here as part of our cloner. And these are being, again, created by the single cube. So now let's say that we want to start to drive some of our cloners uh, with sound. And we can do that using the sound effector. So let's go ahead and drop a sound effector in. So here's our sound effector. We want to associate it with our cloner object. So we can go over to the effectors tab and just drag and drop this sound effector into that box. If we had our cloner object selected and then we chose to create a sound effector, it would automatically be linked up. Now when we go into our sound effector, the first thing that we'll want to do is to add a sound so that we can see actually what we're doing. So under the effector tab, there's an area for the sound file. And let's go ahead and open this up. And in our project files, we'll find this particular sound file. Okay? And so you can use other sound files if you want. They're uncompressed waves or AIFs. You can use any of those. This particular file was actually created specifically for this project. It was mixed specifically for us by Daniel Rockwell. So I want to really thank him for doing that for us. And so feel free to go over to DanielRockwell.com if you're interested in uh, some other music that he's got on there. Uh, but this is a really great piece of music that are really gonna, is really going to help us view kind of the power of the sound effector. So we really want to thank him for doing that. And so we'll go ahead and open this up and drop that in. And if we just hit play right now, you can see that there's actually some movement going on with these blocks, but we're not really hearing anything at this point. So there are a few things that we want to check. We want to just make sure here under the effector that scrub sound is on, and then we've got this little icon down here next to the, the play buttons here, uh, the uh, controls. And so it says play sound during animation. So we'll just turn that on, and now we can hear the music going. Now we only have 90 frames playing right now. Let's go ahead and up the range here to about 1560 frames okay and that'll let, let us have a longer play uh, through the, so we can see what's going on we can uh, I'm just gonna talk over it uh, at times we may go ahead and stop the music to just talk about a few things but hopefully you'll be able to kind of understand me over the music here now the uh, one of the things that I want to show you here is the frequency graph and we'll talk about all these others in a second but the frequency graph you can see it's not updating at all and so if I just click through you can see I get a different snapshot of what those frequencies look like if we want to see a live update we just need to go up to preferences and turn on real-time manager update during animation and now when we play through it we'll get a much better update here okay so let's talk about this a little bit the uh, we've got this sound file here We've also got the start offset, so right now we have no offset, so it's basically the music is starting at frame zero. If we want to not start the music until, or the sound until frame 60, we just put 60 in the offset, 
it plays through, it doesn't start to frame 60. So that's pretty straightforward. Go ahead and change that back to zero. Here we have the apply mode, and this is kind of a big deal because right now you can see that the movement is being applied to all of these objects uh, the same. And I want to I want to emphasize that movement a little bit more because what we're going to be talking about, uh, we really want to be able to see that. So uh, the to change the parameters that are being modified, we'll go to parameter, and right now. Uh, you can see that under transform we've got position scale and rotation and only position right now is checked so this is actually what's being modified by the sound effector in this case the cubes are moving 50 centimeters up to 50 centimeters okay you can also move them in the X move them in the Z you can scale them or rotate them based on the sound as well so let's say that we don't want the position to change but we do want the scale to change so we can change the Y scale here and we'll just change this to maybe something like 2 Okay. And now when we play through, you can see that they're scaling from the bottom. So the bottom doesn't change, but the scale changes. So it's rise and fall. Now back to the effector tab. We've got the apply mode set to all. And then we've got the fall off set to 0%. So the fall off is basically how quickly once the sound goes away, it falls back to nothing. So if we add a little bit more fall off, it creates a little bit more uh, smooth motion there. And when those objects go back down, they uh, go back a little bit, have a little bit more of a fall off from when they go to 100% to zero or you know, from their uh, scale. So play around with that. You'll notice that when you change the apply mode, this fall off is going to go away. Okay, so the other apply mode is step. And so this is going to apply the music based on each individual cube. So if we take a look at this, you can see that it kind of corresponds a little bit with our frequency graph, and it actually does. So the lower frequencies that are going to be over here on our frequency graph are mirrored in these objects on this side, and then it continues all the way to the right and all the way to the right here as far as the amount of sound that we get. Okay. We also have a sample mode, so it's, it's taking samples of those frequencies, and then based on either peak, average, or switch, it's figuring out how much to affect our object. So peak is taking the highest point of our sample. Average is averaging out all the points in the sample, which produces a kind of a more muted result. And then switch is basically just off or on. And so you can see when there is sound, it's on all the way. And when there's no sound, it's completely off. So that's something that you probably don't want to use for this particular uh, example. So we'll change that to peak. Now we've also got a setting a slider here for lower cutoff. So in this case, there's going to be a lot of little things going on here in the lower portions of this, the quieter portions. So we can actually start to cut those off. And so only these areas are affected here. So if we want to kind of even that out, kind of get rid of some of that little noise in there, we can use that. Okay. We can also use compression to bring out some of the quieter areas. So if you have areas that are a bit quieter, you can uh, increase the effect for those. If we look down here under the frequency graph, we have a filter shape. And this is what's going to allow us to define which parts of this frequency graph we're going to be using for our cloner object. So in this case, we're kind of using everything the same. So we can actually start to click in here and create a spline. So in this case, let's say we don't want to use this as much and we want to really use this end over here. Okay, so we just create a sort of graph. Now because this is, there's not a lot going on in here, that you know, really decreases the amount of movement that's going on here. If we really want to use this side and not so much this side, we just dial this down. And we can also add points here in the middle, uh, defining how it's going to be affected. So let's say that we want to, for instance, knock down the end, we don't really want to use you know, this part which is really loud over here on this side, so we'll knock that down, but we really do want to use the mid portions here. So we can bring that up and create something like that. So now we get something that's a little bit more even. So we don't have any that are just shooting off. Uh, everything is a little bit more even there. We've also got frequency color. So we can actually add colors based on the different frequencies. So if we just click, and this is just kind of a gradient here, so if we click on one of these, we'll add kind of a red. Let's click in the center here and add a green. And then let's maybe add a blue over here. 
Now right now nothing is happening, so if we go to parameter under color, all we need to do is turn color on, and then it will use that color. And we have different blending modes that we can use as well. So you can see even more so now how that's actually associated with that. You can see the red over here, to the green, to the blue, and as it goes to black, that's the volume going to nothing. So you can see as all of that sound goes away, everything turns black. All right, but you can now see how that's affecting things. Now it's being muted here. The, the filter shape is muting it. The effect here on this side, if we go ahead and take that up, you can see that would be high there again like that. But we just want to kind of bring that down a little bit. All right, so you can use color, and then you can go into the parameters, and you can decide what kind of parameters you want to use. If you want to use rotation, you can see how we can rotate it like that. So it's modifying it based on the, the rotation. Or we can rotate it this way. So there's lots of fun stuff that you can do here with your sound effector. We'll do some specific things as we go on with the rest of this project. All right, so once we get it, uh, just play around with it, get it to this point, basically and uh, playing with some of the sound effector basics that we have in the effector and parameter tab. Okay, The use filter option we'll look at a little bit later and it's just another method for kind of defining exactly what portion of this frequency graph we want to use for our object. So uh, we'll look at that a little bit later. But now that we've got it to this point, in the next lesson let's start to change things up a little bit by using what we've got here and just changing the shape a little bit making a little bit more of an interesting shape using some deformers and also adding a little bit of random color and uh, movement to our objects so we'll look at how we can do we have a nice bar here but let's say that we want to create more of uh, an elaborate project with some different types of objects in here so this is going to be the first part of our project and we want to make kind of a bowl shape out of this let's say so I'm going to take the cloner now, let me turn this off for a second. We'll take the cloner, and right now it's using a linear mode. And so I'm going to just change this to a radial mode. Okay. And then I want them to be kind of standing up all in a ring. So I'm going to change the plane to the XZ plane. Okay. Now they're right on top of each other, so I'm going to change this radius, pull this radius out. Right now we only have five here, so I'm going to change the count to 30. So we get a nice ring. All right. And right now we're out at thousand centimeters let's maybe take this up a bit to 1700 or so so we get something like that and again we can play through this and get the same appearance it's just in a different configuration here so you can see that we still have the start and end but now they're just in this sort of radial shape okay so let's say we want to add a little bit of shape now to this so maybe deform it into kind of a curved shape but we want to maintain the scaling of this kind of going along and we want it to follow along the new curve that we have for it so we can use a uh, deformer to do this so let's go ahead and drop in first a taper okay and for this to work I want to put it on the same level as our cloner object so I'm gonna uh, go ahead and click on the cloner right click and go to group objects you can also hit alt G okay so now we have a null and then we have the cloner underneath with the cube underneath the cloner so we'll take the taper and put it right under the null at the same level as the cloner. Okay, so we'll go ahead and change the. I'm going to change the size of this. So about 1700, 22, 25, and then it'd be about 1700 or so. Okay, let's go ahead and raise the strength of this. Now you can see it's tapering it up from the top down. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate this in the bank 180 degrees and let's go ahead and take this taper and I want to just move it up so that we get something like this so something close to that alright and you can see here that even though these are now tapered down when we go ahead and play through it's actually still working like it should it's taking into account that taper so that's kinda of cool we can make a little bit more of a curve here if we add a spherify and let's drop this underneath the taper okay and we'll go to object maybe make this sphere a bit larger we'll take the strength up okay and let's move this up here so what we end up with is a little bit more of a kind of bowl shape and then again we'll play through this 
and all those bars are following along with that curved shape. So you can create some really interesting effects and shapes here uh, using these deformers in our hierarchy. All right, so right now, all of the motion of this is being driven by our sound effector. Now let's say that we want to add a little bit of random motion to this. Well, what we can do is use a random effector in combination with our sound effector. So with our cloner object selected, let's go to MoGraph. Let's select a random effector. That's going to automatically drop in that random effector. And already you can see that a lot of these have been moved around. And so what's happened is we've, we've randomized the position of some of these, and then the sound is actually driving the, the movement. So none of the movement right now is coming from the random effector. If we go into the random effector and look at the parameter, you can see that it's actually, we've added randomization in the position X, Y, and Z. So if we go look around here, they're actually going to be off center a little bit. So if we take away the X and the Z values here, then they're only going to be moved up and down, and we can see this if we go ahead and change those values. All right. So if we want to actually add some uh, movement in here, you can add scale or rotation uh, to this. But if we actually want to want this to move, we'll go to Effector, and under the Random Mode, let's choose Noise. Okay, and then we'll go into the Parameters and choose what we want to affect. So we want to affect maybe the the Y movement. And now those are actually moving instead of staying in one spot. Let's go ahead and dial this down a little bit. And on the scale, let's go ahead and add some scale to this as well in the Y. And so we can kind of randomize that as well. And so that just kind of breaks things up a little bit. And we might want to dial it down a little. But we still get the sound affecting the movement, but we also get a little bit of random movement in there. Now as far as the color goes, right now the color is being driven by the sound effector. So if we go down to the effector tab, you can see all of those colors that we added in there. Let's say we want to have more of a random uh, color shift along this. So uh, all we'll do is go into the parameter and turn off color mode. So now we're back to our gray. You can see everything else remains the same. The movement and the scaling is all the same. So let's go ahead and uh, go to the cloner object. And under transform, it has a little color tab. So we'll add just a color in here. And let's, I'm going to add a blue. You can add kind of whatever color you want. But I'm just going to add kind of a dark blue. So now all of those are the same color blue. And with our random effector, the noise is affecting the scale and movement in the Y. But it can also affect the color. So if we go ahead and uh, let's actually just turn off this color. Let's take this color back to gray, just for, so I can show you the example here. And we'll go to our random effector, go to the parameter, turn on color. And so you can see there's these random colors all across these objects. So as that noise is affecting all the parameters, it's affecting the color as well. Well, if we want to add it to that blue, just go back into our cloner object, add that blue color or whatever color we want. Okay. And then we go back to our random effector and change our blending mode. We can change that to add, and it'll add those colors to our blue color. And then we can go back in here if we want to maybe brighten it up a little bit. And we get something like that. So we got the sound driving uh, the, the uh, scaling here, and then we've got some randomization on the scale and on the movement and also on the color. So a lot of different elements that we can add here. And then the shape is being defined by the taper and the spherify. Okay, and you can see what happens when I turn the effect of these off. We get back to this thing right here. Okay. So that's how we can come in and create this kind of element. You can play around with some of the values here on, on the random effector. If you want to change the noise to something like turbulence, you can see that's a little bit different there. We also have uh, animation speed in here, more of a slow moving wave there. And so there's a few different options that you can uh, take into account here that you can use. And then you can change the options on your cloner object as well. If you want to make more of these bars, uh, you can come in here and, you know, raise the count. Okay, so you've got more of these that are kind of closer together. So it all depends on what you want it to look like. All right, so now that we've got this bowl shape as a basis for our project that we've got going on. The next thing that we want to do is to go ahead and add some rings down here at the bottom that we can drive using the sound. 
All right, so we can do that with a cloner and start to, to name and group things together. So I've named the null that has the deformers and the cloner object within it. I've just named that outer ring. And then I've gone ahead and named the sound effector and the random effector appropriately. Because once, once we start to get a number of these effectors in here, they're all going to be named the same. And it will really help to be able to pick those out as far as what goes with which object. Okay, then I've also grouped all of that together under another null. So let's say now that we want to add an element down on the bottom and be kind of a series of disks or uh, tube shapes that are going to represent it maybe look something like a speaker cone or something like that so uh, let's go ahead and start by bringing in some geometry here so the first thing that I'll do is to go ahead and bring in just a tube okay let's go ahead and bring this up to the top and we can change the the values here I'm going to go ahead and bring this out and take our outer radius down so that we get uh, something like that okay and let's go ahead and just make this editable now what I want to do is access polygons here and we'll go to a rectangle selection I must select everything and so make sure that I get a tolerant selection on and turn off only select visible elements and so I want to select everything but the top basically we'll go ahead and delete that now the points are still here so I'm gonna go ahead and delete those as well so that leaves us with this sort of piece of geometry here which is basically this sort of disk shape we can go ahead and kinda of dial the the scale of this down and let me actually go to axis center and center axis and we should be able to come in and scale this there we go and so this will be the kind of the outer part and I want to raise it just above uh, this uh, shape here okay and now we need to create a cloner object so let's go ahead and MoGraph and we'll create a new cloner we'll drop our tube in there and right now the cloner object is moving the tube down so I want to take away that value in the Y okay we will take our cloner object let's move it up here okay and we want to actually create these circles inside here so we'll create a few steps okay and let's take the uh, scaling down so maybe try 80 in X Y and Z okay that's not quite good enough so maybe 75 75 75 so that's getting a little bit better. Okay, let me try 70. I just want the uh, want them not to overlap. So if we get five copies here, that gives us something like this. All right, so these sort of rings, one inside another, created by the single tube. Okay, so now we just need to add another sound effector. So we'll go ahead and add our sound effector. We could also uh, duplicate the one we have. But we'll just bring in a new one. Okay, and again, we've got to select our sound file. We can co copy that into our document path. That's okay. And so now we have our sound file. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the scrub sound for this one since we already have one in our scene that's matched up with it. And so let's see how this is affecting things. Okay, so right now it's not doing exactly what we want, so we'll go ahead and go into the sound effector. And I want to apply the mode based on the step. Okay. You can see that there. And so let's go ahead and move back to the beginning. Start playing this. Okay. Now this one, let's say I want to be affected more by this end of the frequency graph. So I can actually come in and start to modify this a little bit bring those down something like that okay let's go into the parameters and we can change the value we can take down our value here in Y okay if we want to add any rotation we can do that we can also turn on color mode go into our effector 
and let's start to add some color in here. So maybe we'll add kind of a yellow or orange color to this in here. And so we can see as we play through this, this is gonna be lighter out here. If we wanna reverse this, we go ahead and uh, bring this out here and then add this kind of whiter yellow over here. Now that makes it darker in the center. So that center point is actually using uh, this part, okay, we can bump that up if we want to, if we want to add a little bit of scale, we can use a uniform scale if we want to just affect the scale generally rather than in a specific axis, so we can make it grow a bit, okay, I think for the color I'm going to get maybe a lighter orange, maybe something like that and then get kind of a darker orange over here. So just play around with the colors that you've got here, but you're now moving and scaling these rings based on the sound that we've got. And we're using a different sound effector, so we'll go ahead and name, uh, name this one uh, Cone Sound Effector. We've got the cloner object here, so we'll select both of these, and let's go ahead and group those together. Cone group, we'll call that. And you can play around with different pieces of geometry if you want to. Okay. So that gives us kind of a little bit of a, kind of a pulsing speaker cone down there at the bottom, and you can play with the values that you've got. The uh, next thing that we want to do is to go ahead and build a sort of center sphere that's really going to pulse to the beat uh, in the middle. So let's go ahead to use here, and I want this sphere to be kind of the, the driving beat here in our project. So I'll just bring in a sphere, and let's actually bring in a cloner object. And even though we only want one sphere, I'm going to drop the cloner in, and let's take that count down to one. All right. Let me take away the Y value there, and go ahead and move this up, up into the center. We can change the values of our sphere, so let's take the radius way down, and let's start it maybe about 30 centimeters, and we can make modifications to that, but we'll go ahead and leave it uh, there. And if we take a look here, I'm going to leave the resolution the way it is. Um, we can always change that later. So with this cloner object, we can go ahead now and again add a sound effector. So add a new sound effector to the mix. And let's call this Central Sphere Sound Effector. We'll go ahead and add our sound file. All right, and let's make sure that I turn off, I'm gonna turn off the scrubbing. So we'll just use one to listen to. Okay, so right now you can see it's pulsing up and down because the effector is affecting the Y movement. And so I don't really want that to happen. I just want it to affect the scale. So I'm gonna turn off position, turn on scale, and let's do a uniform scale. And so I'm gonna bring this up to maybe something like this. Maybe two or so. Okay. And I really want to just aff uh, affect the sphere based on this lower portion here. So let's use our use filter here. So I'll turn this on. And so you can kind of see this little line right in here. That's going to be the frequency that we're going to be affecting. So as we move this, you can see that that's actually changing that line where that line is. So I'm going to drag this all the way to the end. Okay, right down here. And I'm actually going to take that all the way down. And let's just change the bandwidth. So this is changing the width of the area that we're using to drive the sphere. So I just want to use those lower portions of that beat. So uh, I can go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. Okay, we can also kind of only use the, the loud portions. So we can kind of use the lower cutoff and dial that up a bit. Okay, so you can see how it's really changing drastically. I'm going to change the fall off a bit. Let's go back and look at that. So that's pretty strong. I'm going to actually take change the lower cutoff. 
dial that down just a little bit. I don't want to have a lot of fall off. I want this to be pretty severe as far as the, uh, you know, how it's pulsing here. All right. So that gives us that. We can also change the color. So in our effector, go down to the frequency color. Now this is going to be a little bit more difficult because we're just working with these frequencies right in here. So if I go ahead and change this to maybe an orange color and turn on color mode. So you can see that that's orange now. It's going to be pretty difficult to come in and add an additional color in here. We can go ahead and try that. Maybe make that a lighter orange there. So we want to get them really close together. So you can see it's kind of pulsing there. Okay. So now the sphere, we want to actually be driving uh, a number of cubes that are around the sphere, kind of pushing them out. Um, so what we can do, we'll use this and make it uh, fairly severe, and then we'll have more of a fall off for those cubes. So you can play around with that. I'm going to take the corner and let's just kind of actually move, just move this up a bit. I want to give enough room for those sphere uh, uh, outer cubes. I also want to take this radius down because I want it to be fairly small. Okay, and then I want it to grow a little bit larger. So I'm going to take this down to maybe 10 centimeters or so. And on the sound effector, let's change the parameter instead of a scale of two. Maybe we change that to something like five. Okay, we'll go back and play the beginning there. So it's really, you can really see that change there when it has those really distinct beats. Okay, so you can play around with that. Maybe make it, if you don't want it to go quite so small, you know, make the base radius a little bit larger and then take the scale down to something smaller. And again, we can go back and check from the beginning. Okay, so just play around with that. That's going to be kind of our driving force. And then in the next lesson, we will start to create the uh, the orb of sphere of uh, cubes rather around this sphere that are sort of being driven by it. And that'll be, take a little bit more time and be a little bit more complex than what we have. So 